This is Anderson Penn's podcast episode 24 for Sunday, November 4th, 2012. This is Brian. This is Lisa. This is the Anderson Penn's Radio Network. Welcome. And happy Set Your Clocks Back Day. <laughs> I love that. An extra hour of sleep. It's like heaven. We already spent it. Well, it was nice. <laughs> it was nice. It was. <laughs> Don't um, be a buzzkill. This is the pre-Columbus, Ohio Pen Show edition. Awesome. Um, so before we before we uh, talk about that, let's uh, talk briefly about. We actually got some new pens in this week, and I, I'm yes. kind of stoked about them. So um, I couldn't find anywhere else to put a, put them in. So uh, we'll throw them in right at the beginning. Um, and these are these are new personal personal pens. Uh, of course, last week we announced. Uh, the Twisby Mini arrived, and uh, both of us, Woo-hoo. both of us were able to pull one out for ourselves. Uh, it's called I've, Snag One. Snag One, yeah. Before everybody else buys them, um, I've been using mine all week, and uh, quite pleased, quite pleased with it. Here's a little guy right there. That's the classic. That's the classic. Yeah, yeah. You might even be able to see. I got a little bit of about half a milliliter of ink left. It looks blue. It is blue. It's my favorite uh, urban sapphire. So um, we got that one. You got uh, the all black. I got the the black one, so that I can keep my black pen society pin. Uh, I really like crew. it. Like Brian said, the um, the nib is really impressive. Right out of the box, it's an incredibly smooth writer. Very pleased, and it's. Uh, very similar in shape, almost identical to the 540. It's just a little smaller. Uh, fits really well in my hand, but posted, um, it's it's definitely a good size. Yeah, posted. That's that's the word. I love that this pen posts. Um, yes. Otherwise, it wouldn't be. It would be no good to me if I had if I couldn't post it. It would be too small for you. Yeah, it'd be way. It's yeah. way too small. In fact, it's awkward if I if I know I'm only going to write just a couple of notes. Um, I have to post it, and it's all, I, I, I reach for another pen sometimes because uh, I'm just going to write two words down on a piece of paper. It's kind of awkward. Uh, so we got uh, the minis in, of course, and long awaited. Oh my god! And to everyone's relief, probably more <sighs> mostly so, mine, mostly Lisa's. Um, the Delta Fusion eighty two, and I got to show you the box. This thing comes in. It's cool. And I've been waiting for this since uh, September. Uh, Every day, asking if it arrived, uh, texting, calling. Did my pen get here? Did my pen get here? Oh my well, god! We, we saw we saw it in Dallas. <laughs> it's cool. And then we decided to order it. What? Just shortly after Detroit, I think it was. Um, and it was a back order. And uh, you so- know, we should maybe insert months here because not everyone tells time by pen shows like we do okay, well, <laughs> so we saw it in september yeah we ordered we it ordered it in late september yeah uh, but here's here's the box now this is pretty cool it's uh, like a um a piece of acrylic i guess you might call it it's very um, shiny it's very shiny and you open it up like so Peek-a-boo. and then there's a little spot in the middle right here where the pen sits uh, a very very cool box um, and, it, and it comes actually in another inside another box, a cardboard box, of course. But um, here it is. That's a pen. And uh, if you can kind of see as I rotate it, yep. it's got some really, really pretty. Uh, this is the brown brown pattern. Um, it's kind of one of these pens you have to see in person. It's pretty cool. And uh, and love it or hate it, there's there's much to do about this on the web. This Hard is the to see nib with the glare turning yeah. just a hair. It has yeah, a little gold, bit. eighteen karat gold plate on top of the steel nib. Uh, now, Delta's, I guess, infamous for their marketing um, strategy, but uh, their statement is that the gold heats up the the fusion between the gold and the steel heats up the ink so that it flows better. And uh, I don't care. I think it's a cool pen. It looks cool. It's a nice size. It's not tacky like most of the other Deltas that I'm familiar with. Um, 
It's good size. Uh, and it's just a beautiful pen. So it's pretty. It's more like a, a chocolate brown, like a marbled chocolate. Yeah. Now, now I'm hungry. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, last but certainly not least, um, this week, uh, Lisa and I had a little uh, anniversary that we celebrate every Ooh. November 1st. Um, and uh, she gave me this beautiful Wirt modeled hard rubber eyedropper. Um, I a, snagged it in Dallas. In September. <laughs> in September, yeah. So, well, you know, it occurred to me that you were talking about, you know, Dallas, Detroit. Not everybody tells time by pen shows. So. I, I never never thought that we did that. But now, we do. I'm, I'm going to be more conscious of it now. <laughs> you know, when's Lindsay's graduation? Well, it's either it's before or after Raleigh. Yeah, it's Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> to us, that means, you know, yeah. late May, early June. Right. But, you know, how about Miami? Uh, yeah, it'll be hot then. But, yeah. um, but this, this pen has the uh, the classic, it's probably really hard to see, uh, where it used a, a ventless nib and there's no vent hole on the top of the nib. So instead of putting it there, they put it on the feed. So they cut a, essentially a, a rectangle out of the bottom of the feed, and the pen uh, vents that way. Um, kind of a nice design. It really keeps it nice and clean. But this pen is spectacular. It's got some really big, big spots of red hard rubber and just really a beautiful, beautiful pen. You have no idea what I went through to hide that thing from you. Uh, I bought it at the show and, you know, all of our stuff is out. I don't necessarily keep my purse, you know, under the table. It's always, you know, away. So I put it in the secret top compartment of the cooler at one point. But then I thought, well, you might reach in there for napkins or something. So then I had to move it to um, some box. But then I thought, well, what if we just toss like empty boxes in oh there that goodness. could be bad so <laughs> yeah i i moved it around several times in, in fact you picked it up at one point i did at the show yeah oh my goodness i know so when you finally got your pen that's the uh the acquisitions for the week so pretty pretty stoked about that one um nice and you'll, you'll have more acquisitions later this week uh yeah um speaking of uh pen shows um, a couple of weeks back, we asked for some input from uh, listeners and what they wanted to hear. And one of the topics uh, at the time was surviving a pen show. Uh, now we have um, we have blogged about this before, but uh, um, this is kind of this is one of those shows where it's 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 good to re- to review these uh, these tips. Show prep. Show prep. Yeah. Um, Rule number one, comfy shoes. Um, <laughs> it I, sounds simple, but it's not. Yeah, don't don't underestimate the importance of comfort here. Um, comfortable shoes, uh, thick socks, comfortable outfit. Um, you know, pen people were, were a pretty friendly bunch. If you have uh, pens in your shirt pocket, we're going to ask to see them. Uh, if you carry a purse, messenger bag, um, or something like that, you might want to reconsider. Uh, you'll have to put it on the floor every time you stop or you know, or carry it with you the, the entire time. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick up pens and inspect them when you have this extra extra bag in your hands full. Now, they do give out bags and things like that, but uh, let's try to minimize um, you know, what you're going to bring with you. Uh, dress in layers. Sometimes the temperature in the ballrooms can vary from room to room, hour to hour. We've had some places where it's cold. Uh, D.C. this year was, what did they say, 86 degrees yeah, in the ballroom? It was hot between the people and the actual ballroom. And uh, uh, sometimes they can't, they, they physically cannot adjust the temperature. Either no. it's preset or um, you can't get to it. I know Susan Worth likes to, to mess with the, the thermostat. Um, <laughs> she knows, she always knows where they are, but, uh, sometimes we can't change it or, or we complain and, and, you know, it's too hot or too cold, but it could take an hour or two right. even to get somebody to come and, and look at it. So, yeah. So dress for comfort and, uh, minimize the, the bags. Uh, if you do bring a bag, I guess, uh, one thing I would stress is, um, if you have the bag, 
I, uh, what I used to do is um, I'd put it in between my feet on the floor. Don't put it on. Sometimes people come and they'll put their bags on top of all the rest of the pens on the table. Oh, my it's God. A, don't do that's that. That's a serious no-no. Um, uh, bad, bad form. So just put it on the floor. Put it between your feet. At least you can, you know, you know it's there. Yep. Uh, money. You got to bring it. Money, money, <laughs> money. Cash yeah. is king. Um Cash is, is your best option by far. Uh, some people take credit cards, and, and more and more people are using um, some of the mobile credit card options, but not everybody does. Uh, and don't assume that anyone will just take a check without asking. Um, you know your check is good, but the vendor may not. Um, or you know he or she may not want to put it in the bank for whatever reason. So uh, the other thing regarding price is don't be afraid to haggle a little bit, uh, but don't be obnoxious about it. Um, if a pen, because it happens and, you know, you don't want to start off on the wrong foot. If a pen is marked, let's say $150, feel free to, uh, you know, ask the vendor what's your best price on this or make a reasonable counter offer. 140 for example, on that pen might be accepted, but don't offer like 75 and expect to be taken seriously. Yeah. It's, uh, so, some things are negotiable, some things aren't. And, uh, another little, uh, trick is Sunday afternoons, people yep. don't want to go home with stuff. So if you're going to bargain, um, sometimes you can see somebody on Saturday and they'll say, no, I, I got to get 150 bucks for it. And if they haven't sold it by Sunday, they might take one, 135 for it so uh, if it's still there if it's still there and if you know if, if if they've had a less than great show and they want to at least come home with something and make the sale they may uh they may be more willing to negotiate so uh sunday's also always a good day but you run the risk of like lisa says it it may be gone yep so. somebody else was willing to pay 140 or or the full price of 150 mm -hmm. uh so it's you know, that's the risk you take. Yeah. So. Uh, and speaking of money budget, this is oh. kind of a, sometimes a touchy subject. Um, Between us, you mean? <laughs> no, not necessarily. <laughs> but uh, I don't I, have a budget. We, just buy it. Well, there, there was the infamous quote um, in the, uh, what magazine? Well, it was in the Ohio. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> for some newspaper article and it was it was in Columbus too actually yeah was... about about three years ago and uh, Lisa got interviewed and, and and pretty much the same ideas we're talking about here bring comfy shoes and uh, you know etiquette and I was misquoted well taken out of context <laughs> something <laughs> it was something like it was bad oh, bring bring money lots of it <laughs> more than you think. <laughs> It's not that bad. <laughs> no, um, seriously though, uh, if you have a budget, um, you know, tr tr try to set a budget for yourself. Or, uh, you know, if you have kind of an idea of what you're looking for, you can kind of say, okay, well, I'm looking for this type of this particular pen. I know it usually goes for this amount. You know, add them up uh, and see what kind of budget you have, and try to stick to it. Now, my general rule with budgets used to be. Um, Think about what you're you're gonna look for. Double your budget, add fifty percent on top of that, and then make sure to bring the ATM card. But <laughs> <laughs> don't advocate that. There'll be divorces no. after the show. Uh, no, try try really hard to stick to your budget. I mean, be realistic about it. I mean, can you know what what can you afford? And uh, you know, don't miss the mortgage payment because you're going to a pen show. But uh, they do have uh, ATMs in most most show hotels now, uh, but it's not uncommon for those ATMs to run out of cash. Um, so you know, and of course they're charging they're going to charge you three, four, five dollars for the ATM fee as well. So, and then your bank will charge you as well in many cases. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So bring cash if you can. Um, you know, like we say, some some people do take credit cards, but a lot of the uh, I guess more old school uh, collectors and dealers, uh, they're cash only. So, yep. um, you know, know where, know where the closest uh, branch of your bank is, I guess, if, uh, if you're traveling from out of, out of the city. 
So, but uh, what, when you have a budget in mind, uh, when you finally have that far and you've got your your money set aside, uh, usually what I recommend is uh, take a, a turn or two around the room uh, or both rooms to kind of see what's available uh, before buying at the first table you stop at, unless it's our table, in which case. <laughs> <laughs> Just Bye. kidding. Um, now you you want to you want to make your way around the room, and uh, sometimes if um, unless you you've got something really really rare on your list and you see it and you know the price is reasonable, but uh, other words you can make and we do this all the time. We're at the show for three days, and on Sunday afternoon I see something I have not seen the entire show. So make your way around the room. You know, make a no- note of uh, where things are that you're interested in, and uh, you know, v- vendors, dealers are going to understand that. You know, you you, you got to look around, and um, you know, it's it's natural to to see what else is available, what condition, what price. So, yeah, very rarely will anybody say, "Well, you know, by the time you get back, it'll be gone." It's it's we all understand if you just got there, you want to see what's available. You want to take a turn around the room first. Um, but take business cards uh, from the vendors and on the back of the business card, maybe write what it is because trust me, there are tens of thousands of pens and eventually everybody starts to be just a blur. It was like some guy down some yeah. aisle. Was the third aisle or was it the fourth aisle? Was it on the left or the right? But Did he have glasses or no? I can't remember. So take a business card yeah. and write down – what pen and even maybe the price so that you can then go back through because you will lose track. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I have, I have gone to shows and I've followed that logic and I said, okay, well, there's this nice pen. It's in the other room. And then I go back and for the life of me, I cannot find the dealer Yep. for the rest of the show. Now, sometimes dealers, you know, they're only there Saturday. They're not there Sunday, but uh, yeah, you, you got to write down notes of what else is on the table, who they're by, if you do know somebody or he's behind somebody you know or what have you. So, Yep. Uh, let's see. How about pen show etiquette? Awesome. This is important, uh, especially if you're new to a show or you're bringing someone with you who's never been to a show before. Um, always ask before you pick up a pen. <laughs> <laughs> for some strange reason, not all pens are for sale. Some are just to display, to show a full collection, whatever. So always ask, can I see that? Um, definitely, definitely always ask if you're not sure if the cap of a pen unscrews or pulls off. Do not assume it pulls. Yeah. There's nothing worse than pulling off a screw cap. And I'll scream. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. You know, and, and, and don't don't worry about it because, you know, we've been going to shows for, for quite a while now. And I will still, um, even, even on eyedroppers, which typically are slip caps, you know, if I'm looking at a pen at someone's table and I can't get it off with just a minimal of force, I have no problems handing the pen to the dealer and saying, I don't want to ruin the pen. Do you yeah. mind taking the cap off for me? Let them take the cap off so you can see the nip. Yep. Um, if you Absolutely. can't get it off, or maybe, you know, some pens, there are special tricks. Um, maybe Todd, uh, Swan eyedroppers sometimes have a little pin in the section that when you put the cap on, you rotate it and it locks the cap in place. It's a slip cap, but you have to rotate it and then pull it off. So yep. uh, don't be afraid to ask. And, uh, and if you can't get it, if they say, oh, it just pulls off and you can't get it, don't be afraid to hand it back and say, listen, do you mind? I'm, I'm yeah. interested. I'd like to see it. Do you mind taking it off for me? So. Yep. Uh, and the other thing is do not reach in front of someone else to grab a pen. You could be hurt. <laughs> We've heard stories. <laughs> We've heard stories. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, another thing that's uh, about pen shows that um, – for me is, is important is, uh, the name tag. Yep. Um, usually, usually you get one, uh, at the, at the front counter at the registration desk, um, and put your name on it. And if you're online, if you're an FPN, you're on Pentrace, uh, any of the other forums and you have a, a different name that you go by, put that on there too. Um, I, I, for one, I'm terrible with names, but, uh, and, and faces for that matter. But if you put, 
your name and your FPN username on there, I'll be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. We've talked about this, 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 and this yep. before. So, um, But, uh, you know, always make sure to ask for the vendors' names because you've probably talked to most of these people or you've heard about them. But, you know, uh, if they're not wearing a name tag, just ask. And uh, they're just a great, shows are a great way to meet um, your fellow pen pals in person. Yeah. So you'd, awesome. be su- you'd be surprised at how many people uh, at the shows are people you regularly talk with or hear about or read things about uh, online. So there are a lot of people. And it's it's not even just customer to vendor. You, you and, and someone else could be standing at like our table, for example, and you just glance over. And you see the other customer's name tag and you realize, oh, my God, it's so-and-so and we've exchanged emails, sold pens to each other, whatever. So it's it's a great way not just to meet a vendor or for vendors to meet customers, but for customers to get to know each other. Yep, absolutely. whole lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Family. Feel free to bring the family. It's a great way to help uh, your spouse maybe understand this crazy obsession you have. So at least your spouse knows you're not the only one. There are thousands of other weirdos just like us. <laughs> In which case, <laughs> if you bring your spouse, make sure that uh, item number, uh, what was it, two before uh, on budget, budget has already been set, settled. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as for kids, uh, most shows... Uh, we'll have a Pens for Kids seminar put on by the Pen Collectors of America. Uh, so that's a, a wonderful thing for pens to do. It's interactive. They get a free pen. They have a little history lesson and a writing lesson all in one. Uh, but the rest of the time, uh, please try to keep your children with you uh, so that they don't just uh, run around and, and grab at things. Uh, we, we sincerely love to see kids at pen shows. Yeah, you know, they, they really are intrigued by all of it, and it's a great way to learn. Um, but if they're unsupervised, running around, grabbing expensive pens or yanking caps off, we've, we've had that a couple times at a couple different shows. Um, or just coming by and, and picking up the same pen and just, uh, you know, kind of walking off with it. Um, maybe that's not the best way to approach it. Yeah. Uh, and probably our last bit of advice that we'll we'll share with you today is uh, take some frequent breaks. Um, yep. Make sure that you eat a good breakfast that morning. Oh yeah. Um, you know, stay hydrated. Um, you know, I don't want to make it sound like it's a marathon or it's more strenuous than climbing Mount Everest or something, but uh, there are literally tens and tens of thousand pens uh, at a show. Uh, visual overload can set in. Uh, there's a lot. It could be a lot of people in an aisle. Um, there may be a lot of people at a table. There's you know little room to maneuver. Sometimes it can get very hot. It can get cold. Uh, you know you can be looking at pens and all of a sudden you look down at your watch and you notice it's three o'clock and you haven't had lunch. Um, you know so pace yourself. Uh, make sure to be prepared. You know bring a bring an energy bar too if you, if you want and that way at least you have it in your your pocket. Uh, and if you if you do miss lunch. You've got it right there. So, yep. but uh, I would also a lot of vendors sometimes will have um, candy or chocolate or something at their tables, and and it's there for you. Trust me, they have the stuff for them behind the table. <laughs> but uh, you know, also the uh, shows often will organize uh, a lunch at a special price. Um, almost every show I think we've ever been to has some kind of a restaurant, except yep. for one. Except for, yeah, except for Detroit, yep. Uh, So you can usually grab a lunch or a soda or something, uh, but it's it's easy to lose track of time. There are days, there are shows that we don't sit down to eat until three or four in the afternoon. Well, that's my that's my gauge of a good day. Yeah. (laughs) So how late in the afternoon do we eat lunch? Um, But in the mornings, if you get there, if you're fortunate enough to get there early in the morning, usually there'll be coffee. Sometimes tea, so. But uh, uh, I guess since the show is coming up, we, we must have a wish list of sorts. I'm sure you do. Um, actually, you know, I'm going to have you talk about yours first because I'm going to throw a little twist to mine. What? 
<laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, now I'm all confused. You're, well, I'm throwing you out of uh, out of out of loop here. Out of loop. Um, usually, my wish list is pretty small. Although, as I was saying that earlier, <laughs> Brian was kind of looking over my list and making crass comments. So I'll say that my list is generally small in quantity and big in dollar value. How's that? So is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to catch up. Uh, let's see. What am I looking for? Any Schaefer ladies script cert, the clipless style that I don't already have, uh, which is hard to find. We actually have pictures that we carry with us of what I have so that if we stumble across one, we can look and see that I either do or don't have it. Um, my dream pen, which is the Aurora 75th anniversary. Um, I just refuse to pay what it's worth and it is worth it, but I just, I'm cheap. Uh, any SD DuPont that catches my eye, uh, have a mini collection. Is it really a collection? I think I have one. (laughs) I want more though. (laughs) Now, which, which one do we have? We bought it in... Chicago. Chicago at the auction. That's right. At the auction. I actually hadn't even looked at it or I think I had glanced at it. I didn't actually go and inspect it, which no. is what you should do. Yeah. Always inspect a pen you want to buy in the auction. Um, and I lucked out. I got it for a great price. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, and it's a, a great little writer. Yeah. So if I stumble across another DuPont that is um, equally beautiful and equally cheap, Let's go with inexpensive. I may grab that. They're hard to find in that smaller size. They are. Uh, this one's thin, more like mm-hmm. a. I think even a Schaefer Targa is is thicker than that, but it, it looks sort of like a Schaefer Targa. Yep. Um, so it's it's not uh, big and bulky. I like square pens. Uh, let's see what else do I want? Any Mont Blanc that doesn't look like a Mont Blanc. I like the older '60s and '70s pens. Like these. Yeah, that one and the one that I have with a gold cap. Now, there is sure. there is one of these uh, in the auction, you know. But I already have one. You don't have this one. Well, you have that one? This is mine. Why is that yours? Because it has a broad nib. Oh, that's why. All right, so maybe that one in the auction. <laughs> uh, I'm a reverse Mont Blanc snob. I don't like them to look like Mont Blancs. So, and then, uh, oh, my heart... My vintage pelican, anything with a really nice, smooth, fine nib uh, in a vintage pelican. So just can't cost an arm and a leg, which is what they're worth because they're gorgeous and have amazing nibs. But, you know, we'll see. Well, they're actually fairly uh, – there should be a number of vintage pelican dealers uh, at the show. Yeah, yeah. So I just need to get away from the table and go look. Well, that happens, doesn't Once it? A, yeah. So, and what about you? What are you hiding from me? Um, uh oh. What are you looking for at the show, Brian? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to start with a couple of the um, the standards that I, I'm looking for that I have not been able to find, uh, and it's not for lack of trying. Uh, top on the list, uh, Aiken Lambert Safety. Um, I've seen three this year, I think, and they've so all. Why didn't, why didn't we buy them? Uh, but they're all on eBay. Oh. And I lost every single stinking one of them. Hmm. So, but I, I've never seen them. I don't, you, you just don't see them. Um, so that's top on the list. Uh, I would like to acquire, and I think this one is possible, a John Holland saddle filler. Yeah, but you might not uh, get that until later, like... Uh, I'm, but I December might. 25th, I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Um, I want to work on that one. Um, I'm going to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I know who's going to have one, and she's going to be at our table next to at the table next to us. Oh, isn't that convenient? I know. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I'm interested in, in some modeled hard rubber pens. Um, since uh, Lisa got me the uh, the latest Wirt. Um, and other words would be nice. Maybe another. Uh, I counted. I actually had fewer words than I thought. Uh oh. Um, I have n- less than ten. Yes, uh, I have eight. Oh. So, uh, but I thought what I would do since some of the pens on my wish list actually happen to be 
available in the auction. I thought I would real briefly uh, show the uh, some of the pictures for the pens that are in the in the uh, two auctions. So I'm going to share. Why are you going to give away all the secrets? Then people are going to go, and then we're going to have to bid against them, and it, they're going to cost us money. Well, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to say what I'm going to bid on, but <laughs> anybody who knows me is going to know I'm not going to buy a the Parker 180 and you know so uh, let's I'm just gonna take a real quick uh, in lieu of eBay this week we'll take a real quick view of uh, some of the items that you can expect to see at a, at a pen show auction and um, here we go here now in uh, are we sharing here good yep. uh, in Columbus there this is the only show in the country that has Two auctions. We love you. We love you. Uh, <laughs> the first, the first auction is on Thursday night. So if you're a real, a real hardcore core, uh, show goer, uh, you're going to be there a couple days in advance. Um, this auction, uh, they they commonly call it the discovery auction. Now, what that means is, this is an auction of uh, sometimes hard to find pens that maybe have an issue. Uh, maybe the pen is uh, discolored, it's missing a cap, and maybe it has a crack or it's missing a clip or something. Uh, sometimes people call them parts auctions, but these are some of these are really, really solid, solid items. Um, so you the know, you auction can, of misfit pens. Yeah, actually, you can get some some good deals. I mean, there's some nice, uh, you know, red and olive ripple barrels. Uh, 0552 Waterman here. Um, you know, here's a dual fold senior streamlined. But it's got uh, some discoloration on the uh, on the barrel. So if you don't care that it's uh, discolored and you just want a, a senior dual fold and a streamlined, you know that that's your chance. Um, you know some dual fold juniors that are missing uh, the, the blind caps. Uh, you know if you have parts for some of these, this is where uh, some of us uh, we go and we buy these. Uh, to uh, to make make full pens because maybe I've got the the cap to this Anoto here, but um, fixer uppers fixers uppers and here in this one, check this out. This is going to be interesting. Uh-oh. The uh, the very scarce uh, Ripley vacuumatic, uh, and uh, what this is is a very special uh, Parker vacuumatic that has. Um, the alternating slabs, if you hold it up to light, are blue instead of uh, the regular transparent that you normally see. Very, very scarce pen. But it looks like it's got some damage on the cap. Maybe it's just missing the clip. But uh, the rest of it's there. So it looks like a three-band uh, cap, uh, double jewel model. So, you know, it has some damage, but it's scarce. So it'd be interesting to see what the uh, the bidding on that goes for. we got a couple lots of uh, maybe Todd Swan caps. Uh, barrels, um, lots of swan parts this year. Uh, here's a lot of uh, Conklin Edison LeBeouf caps, um, lots of uh, Parker Vacuumatics. So cool. interesting, interesting stuff. Oh, they actually added some new things on here. Oh, no. They did seriously like in the last, like since this morning. <laughs> Aiken Lambert? Aiken Lambert's with flexible nibs. Oh, Uh-oh. my goodness. Look at this one. Is a gold cap. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. What else they got in here? Moving along. I'm, I'm just checking these out for the first time. <laughs> um, Lady Patricia parts, uh, some oversized Schaefer's. Um, how about this one? A Schaefer student special with a flexible nib. How about it? Nice. <laughs> um, See, but what the what the listeners don't understand is that on the drive to Columbus, we will have our iPad and Brian will have looked at all of these in detail with the iPad up close to his face and he's zooming in and zooming in and I'll be driving like, oh, look at this. Oh, you got to check this out. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Waterman number four. Um, <laughs> he keeps going. No cap. You know, number 14 PSF. Look at this nice, beautiful band here. That to be a nice, nice pen. Uh, so that's just the Thursday auction. Now, the... Uh, Saturday the, auction's crazy. Saturday, Terry's smart. Uh, yes. Dessert party with alcohol beforehand. Sure. Yeah, you got, uh, you know, there's a table. I don't know, how long would you say that table is? 15, 20 feet long of, of just oh yeah all, all desserts you can imagine, cream puffs and all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, Kahlua for your coffee if you want it. Uh, and then this selection of, of really, really fine items. Now, these are the really, really nice ones. 
and it's um, right across the hall. The dessert oh, party yeah. is in with the in the pool area, and the auction room is right across the hall. So you can kind of zip back and forth. Yeah, we got uh, a lot of some th- uh, three stickered snorkels, a 1935 first generation standard vacuumatic in uh, uh, in red, uh, telescoping hand engraved uh, pen Parker 18 and a half. And uh, one of these, I'm going I'm to bid, but I, I don't. I think I'm going to end up on the short end of the stick here. They have not one, but two Waterman 454 Moderns. Um, very scarce pen. Uh, you'll, you'll hear them referred to as a night and day pattern, but uh, very, very pretty hard to find pen. Uh, yeah. But there's going to be two of them in the auction. So, uh, so not, for once, they won't be quite as hard to find. Yeah, yeah. Nine carat solid gold swan, um, you know, an early Waterman 12 modeled hard rubber eyedropper, some Carters, um, dual fold seniors, red hard rubber eclipse. Um, let's see what else we have in here. Mandarin dual fold junior, Parker 75, um, some interesting stuff. Oh, and here's some more additions, late, late additions, uh, Faber Castell, Osmio. Uh, Danish made wartime Mont Blanc. Um, some interesting stuff. Sterling pencils, um, some mint vac parts. So really, really, really cool stuff. Yep. Um, it's just going to be, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to come home with, but, uh, um, I'll have to rent a trailer for the car. <laughs> But I, I'm happy to see that there's been new additions. I'm going to have to pour through those later. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the schedule? So people get there, and what do we do? Who does what? When? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> the show actually officially starts on Wednesday. Uh, for, for those that are hard, really super hardcore, or um, maybe they're coming in from out of town, out of the country, um, you can actually start selling Wednesday. Um, pen selling starts at 6 p.m. Um, so 6 p.m. to whenever. And, and oftentimes at these shows, a lot of the selling, too, is, is done after hours. It's done um, in the lobby. It's done at dinner. It's done on afterwards. The in the hallway. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in privately in somebody's room. So there's a lot more going on that even is immediately visible. Uh, so Wednesday, 6 p.m. to whenever. Uh, Thursday is when the real action starts. Uh, and that's when we're going to be there. I'll be rolling in early in the morning, uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pen selling all day. Uh, wine and cheese party immediately following awesome. following trading at 6 p.m. on Thursday. So um, that's always fun. Uh, and then uh, at 8 o'clock is the the discovery, the first pen sh- pen auction. Uh, and then that those are usually about two hours long. They try, yep. try to wrap them up by 10 o'clock, but there's always about 100 lots uh, in each auction. And uh, Terry does a great job moving things along. But uh, yeah, so your, your your day Thursday could go 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. for pretty much is, is how that works. Uh, and then Friday, uh, more people, more vendors will show up, more um collectors will show up. There is a door prize. I believe this one is by uh, Laban Penn. Yep. Uh, weekend registrants um, from 9 to 1, and then the rest of the public can come in from 1 o'clock until 6. A uh, couple seminars that are always good. Uh, Gary Garner does a great seminar on eBay. That's, I think, at 1030. Uh, Ron Zorn does a pen repair seminar at, I think, 3. Uh, Bruce Mindrup will be doing uh, some pen plating demos. Uh, these are usually ongoing at his table, and he is almost always, I think, uh, in the hallway between the two showrooms. Yeah, kind, kind of, of on a corner. Right around the corner. And, yeah. Share their little bad boy spot there. I'm gonna. I'm definitely uh, interested in that uh, that demo. I'm going to check that out this year. He, wrote, yeah. he actually wrote an article in The Pennant, uh, on this very topic, and uh, I, I was so interested, and I, I found out he actually does it at the show. I'm going to definitely go over there and check it out. Yep, he's got a good spot. Uh, at six, this is exciting. The pizza party hosted <laughs> by Pendemonium. Um, no matter how many pizzas they buy, they oh, run out. Oh man, it's it's huge. It's I mean, it's huge. like huge. I mean, stacks and stacks and stacks of pizzas. It's just yeah. crazy. 
any kind of combination, you know, veggie pizzas, meat pizzas, Hawaiian, whatever. You name it. And then there's uh, soda. I don't think there's breadsticks, are there? No, I, I, think I don't it's remember. just pizza and soda. It's pizza and soda, water. Yeah. Yep. I think there's some coffee too, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, always a good time. And then uh, everyone's just seated uh, at round tables. Just find a place and uh, just chat and invariably you know pens start to come out and you're swapping pens and eating pizza and yeah deals go down at those tables too. oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's a good time and then the uh, pca general meeting the annual meeting is at eight o'clock so uh, awesome. we have to stick around for that i'm going to sit up in the front row for that one are you yeah. you could sit at the the president's oh, table no 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 the, the, that's just for people who are actually elected <laughs> <laughs> I elect for you to sit next to me. <laughs> I will cheer you on. Go team. I'll, I'll, right. I'll have a little sign or something. Applause. I voted for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then Saturday. Uh, Saturday, there's going to be another door prize. Uh, and I think they do this in the afternoon where they drop so. these. Uh, Bexley uh, is donating a pen. So that's cool. Uh, setup is from eight to nine, which means if you are a weekend registrant, you can probably get in uh, as early as eight, um, which is a good because Saturday is the busy day. Yes. Uh, if if you've if if you're coming Friday, you're doing the whole weekend, and you see something that you're not sure is going to be around, um, that Saturday morning may be the only time you're going to be able to get to it. Um, so uh, set up eight to nine. Public show runs nine a.m. to five p.m. A couple more seminars uh, Saturday. Deb Basil's doing a calligraphy workshop, nine thirty to eleven thirty. I do believe you have to sign up for that one in advance, or I believe so. Okay, Deb's Deb's workshops almost always, I think, are, yeah. are sold out far in advance. Yeah, I think there 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 is a fee. I don't remember what it is uh, for it, but twenty uh, maybe twenty or 25, thirty I'm bucks. Not sure. that, it's well worth it. Um, so she's doing a seminar. Roger Cromwell is uh, doing a seminar at one thirty. How to buy and sell pens. Uh, I actually went to the seminar uh, two two or three years ago. Uh, yep. A good seminar, actually. It, it ended up uh, ended up going about uh, boy about two hours. I mean, it was we just questions start coming out and uh, real interactive. And and Roger had uh, a couple of lots of pens, and you know we, he encouraged everybody got up, encouraged everybody to go around and and, uh, and, and practice uh, pricing a large lot of pens. It was really interesting. I actually won a pen at that <laughs> seminar. Um, the funny thing is, is, Lisa says to me, she says, okay, go to go to Roger's seminar. She says, and, and come back and, and win that pen. And so I came back and I had the pen <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> I didn't think uh, it would happen. <laughs> uh, I didn't either. I was shocked. Uh, but uh, that's 1.30 Saturday. Uh, there's a Pens for Kids seminar. Ralph Stilwell, uh, who does an amazing job. Uh, amazing. I, yeah, I've seen him do these, I've, uh, these seminars. Uh, really gets... Gets the kids' attention. Uh, that's at one. Uh, Bruce Mindrup's doing more uh, pen plating uh, demos at his table, uh, and so the show ends at five. Uh, so you get just enough time to to cover up your stuff and get out, grab something quick for dinner because the dessert party starts at seven fifteen and runs till nine. Um, but if you're going to the auction. The dessert party is like seven fifteen to seven fifty five because you're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna get in you're gonna get a good seat uh, at the auction because the auction room gets full yes um, and it's and it's not a small room I wouldn't say but uh, there's all, it's standing room only by the end of the night yeah. um, and, and the way Terry runs the shows generally speaking the really really high end stuff he saves kind of towards the end so um, you know the the excitement keeps building throughout the night. Uh, that so does the alcohol level. Yeah, so does the alcohol <laughs> level. Um, uh, auction runs 8 to 10. So, uh, again, you get another day that's uh, essentially 8 a.m. It's going to be 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I mean, it's a long day for uh, for, for you. So that's keep in mind those uh, take breaks, comfortable shoes, uh, pieces of advice we gave you. Uh, Sunday, then... Um, one more door prize giveaway. So you got you know three chances now to win door prizes. Uh, Penscapes Pens, uh, which is Roger Cromwell's uh, company, setup runs 9 to 10. Public show 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. again. Uh, Richard Bender is going to have a nib workshop at 8.30. That's registration, pre-registration only. Yep. Um, and there is a fee, correct? Yeah, there, there is a fee for that. I did that a couple years ago. Uh, good seminar. 
um, hands-on. I do believe he also has, uh, you can audit, essentially audit the seminar. Hmm. Um, you don't get the you don't get the little pack of he gives you some nib smoothing sticks and, and, and a couple of pens to, to to practice on, but you can sit in and listen and ask questions. Um, so definitely check that out. That's at eight thirty. Um, Deb Basil is doing her calligraphy workshop again this time ten thirty to twelve thirty. Uh, the pens for kids seminar is at one. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure that we'll have one both okay. days. Okay. Sundays is kind of iffy because uh, sometimes traffic's not there and. If, if there's a football game on, then <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> all bets are off. Yep. Um, just listed a generic pen repair seminar at one. I don't know if that's Ron Zorn or if someone else is going to be doing that. Uh, they do have a slot at 2 p.m. for a to be determined uh, hmm. seminar. And uh, Bruce Mindrup again uh, at, at his table. So doing the pen cool. blading seminars. Lots of stuff to do. Yeah. So it's, it's busy. I mean, you know, just. You almost have to sit there and go, okay, what do I want to, what do I want to see and do and, and plan it out and set reminders on your phone because it's a lot of stuff to do. So yeah. in fact, I've already started my own list uh, and it's now more than almost a whole page of different people I want to see and what I want to talk to them about. And, you know, th- this guy's got this pen that I want to see and I didn't buy it in Detroit and uh, this, that, and the other thing. So. And the seminars, if you've never attended one, it's a terrific way to get some some one-on-one or at least small group um, information from uh, some of these people who do the seminars. Uh, but it's if you only go to one show and this is it, this may be your one chance to, um, you know, see Gary Garner talk about eBay or see right. Roger Cromwell uh, do his thing. So Yeah, and if you've got a question on, say, you're just starting to repair snorkels and you just don't get how that, you know, how to get that, uh, that O-ring into the, the best way to get the O-ring into the barrel or, or, you know, you have some other question, there's your chance. Yep. You got them right there. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, even if you don't, if you're not interested in anything in the auction, I highly recommend the entertainment value at the auction oh my God. is high. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, sit, have a seat in the back Grab some dessert and just you know watch the antics. It's just it's crazy. It, it's a lot of fun. So even if you're not bidding or buying on anything, so. But uh, I'm exhausted just thinking about it. Oh, I'm I'm stoked now. I'm ready to go. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else do we have going on? Here? All right. Uh, this last week we had a, a new poll question. Yep. Um, kind of a loaded question, but I I I knew in the back of my head what the winner was going to be here. What is uh, your favorite shade of ink? And our choices were black, blue, green, red, purple, orange, or yellow, brown, and then another category, any other. So uh, what did you vote for? Did I vote? You, I think you did vote. Uh, I think I voted, I don't know, either green or blue. <laughs> you don't remember. I don't remember. It was so long right. ago. I think I did it the first day. Um, the color that I thought was going to win did win. And with 39% of the vote, uh, blue yes. came out on top. I, I, I sort of expected that. Uh, I did too. What I, I wasn't expecting was the second most popular color in this poll. I was shocked. Uh, at 27%, a lot of people like brown. It was. I never saw that coming. <laughs> I, I and to be honest, I don't think I've ever used brown until um, till your Macarta. Until I got the Macarta. And uh, what was that? Uh, I'm blanking out. Uh, Gerbon. Cacao uh, de Brazil. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, a lovely, lovely, lovely color. Uh, in third place, um, also, I guess I'm not totally surprised at twelve percent uh, purple. Uh, black in fourth place at eight um, percent. Following up there, closely green at six percent, uh, then red at four percent, and uh, let's see, other other was four percent, and uh, orange or yellow is nobody's favorite color. It's so sad. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna do another poll this week. I'll get it set up. 
Uh, and uh, I think what's, what's going to be interesting, and, and I, I, I get this idea because when I got the Delta this week, it's a brown pen. And I thought, well, should I put brown ink in it? Do you match your ink color to the color of your pen? Uh, yes, no, sometimes, complimentary colors only. So what, what, what do you think, Lisa? Um, I think I usually do, but I guess it depends on the pen. Depends on what I'm going to use it for. What you're going to use it for? Well, like if I'm going to grade papers, I never put red ink. I, I don't grade in red. Why not? Well, because that just seems harsh. I used to do it all the time. <laughs> I know. I try to be nicer than that. But, uh, yeah, I usually try to put in a, either a matching or a complementary color. Okay. But, I mean, it depends on if you've got a, a weird color pen. Like, what are you going to put in your Delta Coliseum? I'm not going to have a Delta Coliseum. <laughs> I know. But if you had uh, that one. That solves that, doesn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm in the sometimes camp, I guess. Of course, uh, my favorite color ink is blue, and most of my pens are blue, so. But doesn't that get boring? Like, no. Don't you want somebody to borrow your pen and write with it and have, like, this teal green or something? No? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we'll just see what other people have we'll to say. See. We'll see about that. All right. All right. Let's see what else is going on. Fountain Pen Day. In the news. In the news. Yeah. was uh, Friday, November 2nd. Uh, did you guys know that? I know you knew that, but uh, we were one of the founding sponsors <laughs> of FountainPenDay.org. Uh, all right. Let me clarify. All the sponsors were founding <laughs> sponsors because it was the first time. Um, but actually through that website or because of Fountain Pen Day, um, we found another vendor. And we're going to announce that new product in just a minute. Check out the site. Um, but the FountainPenDay.org site is pretty cool. It's got uh, all sorts of, of neat stuff. It's got a blog. It's got a list of vendors. There were uh, a number of sales. Um, but, uh, it was, it was kind of fun. Yeah, we, we, so we, uh, we did that and, and kind of in celebration of Fountain Bay, Fountain Pen Day, we, uh, we took part in a first ever collaboration with, uh, several other Fountain Pen notables, uh, and put out the Fountain Pen news video. So if you haven't <laughs> seen it, check it out. It's oh good my God. fun. Uh, it's on it's on our blog just a, a few days ago, uh, and you can also find it on our YouTube channel too. So, but don't watch it while drinking anything. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you're going to spit something out on your screen. Is what it is. Uh, Stephen Brown was the uh, mastermind behind it. He did an oh amazing job yep. editing it. Yep. Big so. big kudos to Stephen for all the hard work. And and just to kind of give you a little bit of a teaser, we we had so much fun doing it that. This won't be the last. Yes. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yep. So what's, uh, what's uh, now that it's been at least a minute and a half since we said we were going to announce something, uh, what's modern and new on the website this week? Well, we just got in Scribal Workshop, Inc. Yay. Dun, da, da. Uh, we did literally discover the company through the Fountain Pen Day site. Uh, we were just scrolling through, looking at other companies and, and places and, and people we hadn't heard of. We were clicking on links like, oh, check this out. And we found this company, um, contacted them, and less than 24 hours later, we had wink, uh, we had ink winging its way toward us. Yeah, it was um, like, on, like on Wednesday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was and, crazy. And, like, and like Lisa's sending me these text messages, what do you think about Scribble? I'm like, awesome, whatever, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, boom. <laughs> so. Yeah, we get the shipping notification with tracking, and uh, it just arrived. And the colors are pretty cool. They're bright, vibrant. Um, the bottles are uh, tall, mm -hmm. and uh, the labels on the bottles are pretty cool. It's it's a uh, a smaller company, um, but uh, we've already sold a couple bottles. So yeah. check out uh, the images on the website, and uh, we'll be probably replacing a uh, we'll be placing a, a restocking order 
either later this week or definitely um, as soon as we come back from Columbus. Yeah. I do not anticipate these will last long. Yeah, we'll have them in, in Columbus too. They're pretty cool. I, I, yeah. I'm quite pleased with, uh, believe it or not, I, I like the purple a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Awesome. Uh, speaking of ink, we've got some new Noodlers ink arriving either Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we've got the Harder to Get Colors um, Rome Burning. Uh, that's been around for a little bit, uh, but that's one of the newer colors. And then the brand new um, Q-Turnity and the 54th Massachusetts. Those are both uh, shades of blue. Quick dry. Sorry? Right? They're quick. They're qu- very quick dry inks. Yep. They're uh, really pretty colors. Uh, plus, we are getting in a number of uh, other Noodler's inks, including some of the Bulletproof, um, some of the Eel, and the Polar colors that we haven't carried before. And then uh, more will be coming in after that as well. Yep. Uh, and if we didn't have enough ink for you, uh, Dye Mine is now rolling in the doors. Uh, so we placed our initial order with them, and we're going to have these. They should be here tomorrow, I hope. Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. So what will happen in time for Columbus, uh, some of them anyway. Yep. Um, so that's coming too. Yep. Not sure how many boxes will get here before Columbus, but... Uh, it's going to be tight. I was promised that they would be here before we leave Wednesday afternoon for Columbus. So we may get a box and put it in the, <laughs> put it in the car, but we will have it for Columbus. Awesome. Uh, let's see. We've also got uh, a few new models of the Noodler's Conrad fountain pens coming in. The uh, Galapagos Tortoise is finally back in for us, as well as, uh, this is new for us, the Burgundy Rollerballs. Yeah, I'm interested to see this. That We've had like the a... clear. Yeah, this is the Conrad, though. The right. Conrad Rollerball. So yep. use that piston. So we'll see mechanism. how those look. Cool. That should be fun. Uh, what else do we have? Mont Blanc Inc. should be arriving sometime this week. Hopefully. <laughs> well, it came from the East Coast. Yeah, so. And it was ordered just before the hurricane. Yeah, so. So I'm not sure where it is at this yeah. point. Um, I plan to uh, snag a bottle of the lavender purple once it arrives. Okay. But, uh, oh. We will be fully restocked on all of those, and um, they always sell out fast. So if that arrives before Columbus, um, we'll put it up on the website, but uh, buy it soon because it yeah. will sell out. Uh, and as far as uh, ink is concerned, uh, we still have that promo run until uh, November 21st for ink samples. Buy any two bottles, uh, ink any brand, any size. Uh, just put down a... Um, a sample brand and color in the notes section of your order, and we'll throw in a sample for you for free. So um, we've got that uh, for you. And Woo. and last week we mentioned that there might be another contest. Uh, so uh, pick me, pick me. We uh, we talked about it uh, last couple of days, and uh, from now until Saturday, December fifteenth, we are going to be accepting entries. For our holiday giveaway to be drawn on our podcast Sunday, December 16th. So you could get it for Christmas. Yep. What are we Uh, giving away? We are going to give away, after much debate. (laughs) And seriously, there was a lot of debate (laughs) about this. Picking stuff up, putting it down. Do we want to do this, this color, that color? This combination. Is this too, yeah. Uh, A Twisby VAC 700. You heard right. We are giving you... A Twisby VAC 700. Uh, Your choice of sapphire, amber, or smoke uh, based on whatever nib we have available. And we have almost every one of them. Yeah, we do. I think we have them all. So extra fine and broad. Yeah, extra fine, fine, medium, broad. Uh, The VAC 700s do not come in stubs. Uh, You also receive a bottle of Schaefer Green Ink. And to round out the holiday theme, you get a bottle of Pelican 4001 Red Ink. So you get green and red ink and your choice of a VAC 700, which holds a lot of ink. Yep, a ton of ink. So Yep. Uh, It's about a $100 value. Yep. And we would like you to send in a winter holiday-themed submission. Okay, can you Meaning a Christmas postcard, a Hanukkah greeting card, something that's holiday-themed. Winter holiday theme. No Valentine's Day cards, please. Uh, and one entry per person. Hint, hint. International, of course. 
Absolutely. Absolutely welcome. Yep. S- send them in. Uh, send your entry to Anderson Penn's Holiday Giveaway, P.O. Box 732, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54912. Awesome. That's going to be fun. Yeah. So we've got uh, just a little bit over a month. Uh, start getting those in. Uh, I will put something else up on the blog in a little bit to remind you to, just in case you forget. I can't uh, wait for the Santa postcards to oh, start yeah, coming. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Esterbrook used to do a lot of um, uh, promoting with Santa on their stuff. So, you know, extra bonus points <laughs> or <laughs> just kidding. Um, anything else this week? I think we pretty much covered it. Um, I think we covered everything. Okay. Uh, there will not be a podcast next Sunday. We will be doing a post show review probably Monday or Tuesday, uh, immediately following the show. So you can get your show fix on. Um, but, uh, give us other, a day or two to recover. Yeah. Give us, give us a day to recover. Uh, comment, suggestions for topics, use your pens, write to us at Anderson Pens, P.O. Box 732, Appleton, Wisconsin 54912. Or catch us online. Email is brian at andersonpens.net. Or lisa at andersonpens.net. You can find us on Twitter, twitter.com slash andersonpens. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash andersonpens. Website, of course, andersonpens.net. And do check out the blog andersonpens.net slash blog. Make sure to join our mailing list for advance notice of upcoming events or pre-orders. Thanks for listening to our podcast. See you after Ohio. Woo. Bye.